Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for this announcement. I'm pleased to be here to share some important plans for Alberta's continuing care system. For years now, Albertans have asked the Ministry of Health to re-examine our continuing care legislation and address challenges in the system. We made a commitment in early 2020 that we would review the, legis the legislation and address concerns. This review led to the development of a new Continuing Care Act, which I'm proud to introduce into the legislature today. The proposed legislation is foundational to our overarching goal that Albertans receive continuing care have a better quality of life, whether it be through home and community care, in support of living accommodations, or in continuing care homes. The new Continuing Care Act would create system-wide efficiency and improve service delivery for Albertans. It will also support health system accountability and sustainability. Modernizing Alberta's approach to home and community care, supportive living accommodations, palliative and end-of-life care, and continuing care homes. Without this new legislation, we risk gaps and inconsistencies remaining in place, and we would be unable to make transformational shifts required for system improvement. Our current continuing care legislation dates back to 1985 and includes content in six acts, six regulations, and three sets of standards. What we know about continuing care has evolved over time, and existing legislative requirements do not effectively reflect present-day practices, services or settings, or address the changing needs and expect expectations of Albertans. As a result, some of the provisions in our existing legislation are outdated and fragmented and add layers of complexity and inconsistencies in how the continuing care system is governed. The COVID-19 pandemic also revealed system gaps. The legislation I am introducing today will address these limitations in our existing laws and bring them up to date under one streamlined act. This new legislation will help transform the continuing care system to reflect the importance of residents and client quality of life and a person-centered approach to care and services. It will enable shifts to expand home and community care, improve care within continuing care homes and in other settings as well. And it will also allow us to start implementing recommended actions identified in our review of continuing care homes and palliative and end of life care. Transformation will require responsible but bold action. The proposed legislation will set the stage to achieve this transformation and support system sustainable sustainability for years to come by replacing multiple acts with one piece of modern streamlined legislation, improving transparency and accountability, enabling a person-centered, flexible and innovative system of care for Albertans, establishing a consistent approach and align legislative requirements and services across the continuing care, and addressing gaps in current legislation to give Alberta Health greater authority to effectively monitor and enforce compliance to legislative requirements, including standards. If passed, some of the changes the legislation will include setting consistent requirements for inspections of continuing care homes, supportive living accommodations, and home and community care offices to ensure compliance with the Act, regulations, and standards, enabling new administrative monetary penalties to be imposed on operators if they are not compliant under the legislation, and setting expansive regulatory making authority to set out further details on content in the Act and to include content in regulations with respect to additional topics such as staffing and provision of goods and services. I'm also proud to say, if this act is passed, Alberta will be the only province in Canada with integrated legislation for its entire continuing care system. In closing, let me re-emphasize the importance of why Alberta needs new continuing care legislation. Having one overarching piece of legislation will provide consistency and alignment across the continuing care system. It will apply to home and community care, supportive living accommodations, palliative and end-of-life care, and continuing care homes. The proposed legislation will establish clear and consistent authority and oversight for licensing, 
accommodation services, and the delivery of publicly funded health care in the continuing care system. The new legislation supports our larger commitment to Albertans to increase access to continuing care and meet the demands on the system over the next decade and beyond. We're creating over 1,500 new spaces in the coming year alone with a funding increase in Budget 2022. But we need to do much more. Our review of continuing care showed the demand on the system will increase by 60% by 2030. At the same time, we should be helping more clients live independently for longer to avoid or delay admission to a facility. That's better care for the client, it's better use of resources, so we can serve more clients. The review recommended increasing long-term home care from the current 30% of total clients to 40% by, by 2030. We're starting that strategic shift now with more funding for home care this year, and it's just the beginning. We're strengthening the continued care system to meet the challenges of the next decade and beyond through, through this legislation, the review, and the funding in Budget 2022. So thank you, and I'm pleased to take your questions. Thanks very much, Minister. Uh, it's a busy morning, and we've had the tech briefing already uh, under the usual conditions, so we'll try to keep the Q&A short. Uh, we have reporters here in the room and on the phone, I think. Uh, so we'll start in the room, uh, and as always, a reminder, we're under standard embargo conditions. Uh, nothing said here is to be used until the bill is introduced uh, this afternoon. So thanks. With that, we'll start in the room. Hi, Janet French from CBC. Uh, this all sounds very technical. Uh, can you help explain why this matters to ordinary Albertans and what changes a resident or a family member might notice if they have a loved one in con continuing care? So this is the, the start of the transformation that we're beginning. Uh, as you know, uh, our government uh, led the facility-based continuing care review uh, last year. A number of changes were, were identified, uh, particularly the, the need to move to support uh, seniors and and other people who require care in their homes uh, longer. Uh, so we started to do that with uh, with budget 2022 uh, in terms of expanding the uh, access to home care. And what this act will do will it'll enable us to have a consistent approach across the entire sector. Uh, it'll enable us to actually ensure that there's licensing for all the facilities that come under the act uh, and a better oversight for that uh, with the ministry. So there won't be an immediate change. Uh, that people will see with the Act. This, but this is the start of the overall transformation that we need to deliver, quite frankly, what Albertans want uh, and what we need to do. Thanks, Janet. Follow-up? Uh, yes. So in the MNP report, uh, there were recommended hours, minimum numbers of hours that they were hoping long-term care and designated supportive living residents would receive. Uh, I understand that that is still an ongoing government decision. Do you plan to... to follow or accept those specific recommendations by the MNP report and when would we actually see those changes take place and will they be in legislation? <laughs> So the changes, well, I'll do the last question first. The changes won't be in legislation. The purpose, they will be in regulation. Now, the purpose of the act is, is to be able to ensure that there's broad regulatory power so we can provide the services. Uh, there is going to be a ton of work. Um, we are going to be working with uh, the, the service providers, uh, you know, all the continuing care homes, um, designated living, uh, those providing home care uh, over the course of the next year to get the, once we pass the act, to get the regulations done. In addition, uh, we are also working in terms of our broader government government response to the MNP, the FBCC, uh, FBCC review, we understand that there's, there's, there's challenges in the sector. We need to uh, not only increase access to home care, which, which are starting right now, uh, but there's challenges in the sector in regards to attraction and retention of, of individuals. Uh, there's, you know, the, as you saw, said in the report, um, an increase to the hours being provided. So that is actually, uh, right now, we're, we're going through that process in terms of uh, of uh, cabinet in terms of what our overall response is. So that will be coming out in the coming months. Uh, the benefit though of having this act in place, it will able, enable us when we set the regulations, uh, it will enable to be able to make it uh, easier to set those regulations and they'll be standardized across the entire sector. So you haven't committed then to those hours? Not, not yet, it's, uh, we're still working on it. Okay, thanks Minister and Janet. Um, I thought we had two in the room, but it's actually only one. So we'll go straight to the phone. Uh, he's just auditing this course, I guess. So straight to the phone then, please. Thank you, Dean Bennett, Canadian Press. Thanks. Am I auditing this course? Okay, I'll, I'll audit it. Minister, you, you referenced in your remarks um, COVID-19 really kind of exposed some of the problems you were having, or gaps in the system. I wonder if you could be more specific, without naming names, but 
can you give Albertans a sense of, of how uh, the, the problems with the legislation really frustrated uh, your government uh, dealing with COVID and, and care, care facilities? Yeah, no, no, thanks for the question. So some of, some of the work that we're doing, is, as you know, and it actually was identified in the uh, MNP report uh, in terms of, you know, uh, in a congregate setting, you had two people in a room. Um, we're, we're making a change. We're already actually started to make that change in terms of uh, uh, investments to be able to, for, for more spaces. You saw that in, uh, uh, in Budget 2022, uh, uh, where we're doing investment to be able to enable that. And we're already ma making that shift away. Uh, this, you know, when we start talking about the act, then we can be able to make modifications to the uh, to the regulations, and also uh, in terms of uh, pr processes and procedures. So, so that will be that will be easier. Uh, what it also will do is is standardize oversight. Uh, so it brings it up to the Ministry of Health, uh, not just AHS, uh, and so we can have a standard approach in terms of oversight. So when we when we think about uh, uh, COVID, although we work very closely. Uh, with all of our operators, you know, having a standard oversight be able to, and, 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 and reporting, and we can make that available to Albertans. Uh, I think this act, this act will help um, uh, drive that forward so that when we need to deal with, you know, COVID, uh, next waves of COVID, or whatever, whatever comes at us again, um, we have a standard approach for the entire setting, uh, the, the entire sector. Thanks, Minister. Uh, Dean, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, sorry, Steve. I'm going to give it a two-parter here. I'm going to try. Uh, please explain why it's, it's more important to have a license versus a certificate, what the changes is. And also, Minister, can you tell me, because you're making changes to, uh, to stop retaliation against uh, complainants. I'm wondering where that's coming from, how you plan to do that, and what were you hearing? Were you hearing a lot of retaliation against people making complaints? Yeah, no, thanks for the question. So uh, I'll do the retaliation. You know, we, we did not hear a lot of that, but this is quite frankly a best practice, right, to ensure that we, um, uh, that people who are who are making a complaint um, feel like they're comfortable and actually moving forward in, in that complaint uh, without concern about any impacts in uh, on perhaps their loved one uh, or if the person making a complaint on their own, own behalf in a continuing care, uh, in a continuing care facility. In regards to the, uh, to the uh, first question, uh, can, can, sorry, can you just repeat that again? This is in regards to. Well, you want to, you want to make sure the licensing is done across oh, yeah. the board, whereas some have certification. So, what's the for dummies difference? Yeah, so it, it, it's it's more of a uh, uh, of an approach. So, first of all, we had some which were certified, other than license, and and quite uh, some in the sector where neither applied. So, by providing a uh, a licensing, uh, this is more of a uh, a an approval. Um, so, you you know, going forward. Uh, you know, anyone operating in this space is going to have to apply, uh, meet certain conditions, and then get licensed, and, th and that's approval to operate. Uh, certification is just means that they're 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 certified as a particular sector. So, um, you know, our view is that a licensing regime, uh, quite frankly, is is safer for uh, for Albertans. But what this also does is it standardizes the same approach across the board. Thanks for that, Minister. So uh, we'll take one last caller, please. Thank you, Lisa Johnson, Post Media. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm wondering, you mentioned, Minister, that this aims to streamline oversight through Alberta Health. So does the plan for that better oversight involve the hiring of more staff in the ministry, or how does that work on a practical level? Yeah, so we're, 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 we're going to work out the details in the regulation. Uh, so we haven't got uh, firmed plans in terms of how best to actually to, uh, to implement, but it may require... Um, uh, additional resources within Alberta Health. Um, we may be able to use current resources and actually change the focus, uh, or it may, we may be adding resources down the ro road. Uh, we haven't worked through that yet, but as we get into the regulations, uh, then we'll be able to do that. Thanks, Lisa. Follow-up? Thanks. Yeah, so the way I understand this is a framework, framework legislation, and a lot of these details will come out with the regulations. But I'm wondering if you can give us like, I'm still trying to pin down some specific examples of, of what this does, like transitioning the continuing care system from its current state, state to a future state. How does this help lay the groundwork for that? Like, do, do, how does it make it so that operators can increase spaces, or does it not really tie specifically to any of those kind of goals? So, so it, it does because in the regulation, uh, you know, it, like cur currently it sort of lays out what the approach of, of government is in terms of the providing of, of, uh, of services, for example, and how those services can be provided. And right now they're in multiple acts. Um, 
as I indicated before, there's overall six acts. So by, by putting it into one act and then actually working closely with the operators in terms of ensuring that uh, we put the regulations in, in, in place. And, and one of the things we heard from the FBCC um, is that we need to ensure that there's flexibility to be able to deliver the services uh, in, a, in a way that is, that, is, that is timely. And what this does is by having it all in one place when we actually set up the regulations, we can make those changes to be able to support you know, uh, the shift to more home care, uh, but ensuring that you know, the, the licensing is done of, of home care operators uh, and that the, the regulations make sense to be able to provide that safely and, 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 focus, on, uh, uh, and focus on outcomes. And you have a high degree of, of transparency across the across the trans sector. I'll just give you one small example. So, you know, under the current regs and in the current acts, uh, if you're going to go from a, a, a designated standard living to a, um, uh, for example, a, a continue into a continuing care setting, under the current act, the, the the silliness of it, quite frankly, is you'd actually have to move rooms, even though it would be the same. Uh, for example, in, in certain uh, in certain settings, you have continuing care uh, rooms in the same uh, building as you do have uh, a DSL, but you'd actually have to move the room to be able to do, do the change. Well, well, that doesn't make any sense. And part of that is is a function of different acts and, and different regulations. By putting it all together, we can make sure that as people move through their journey and being supported uh, in the broader continuing care setting, uh, then uh, as a result, uh, we can assure that, you know, if they, if they have to increase the, the level of care that they need, they perhaps in, in these organizations, they can stay in the same room and then, and then the care will come to them. So there's, that's just a small example of one of the things that we can address by putting it all in the same place uh, and then making sure it's up to, up to date, uh, fits with the current standards or practices. And then the other, the other comment I'll make is that when we're moving forward, because this is going to be transition over time, which is why we want some of these, uh, these standards and the regulations, is that better practices come into place that make more sense can result in you know, better care and, uh, and, and manage the cost, uh, then we can make the change to one set of re regulations or practices uh, in one location, increases the transparency, and make sure you don't have cross impacts as people move through the system. Thanks, Minister. We'll wrap it up there. Uh, thanks, everyone who called in. As always, you can follow up separately after. And reminder, we're under embargo until the introduction of the Act this afternoon. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.